Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code to add it on the Roku website is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Same with iTunes, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, as we expected, Jermaine Taylor has been formally charged with two felonies. Right? Understand, they're going to try to spray deodorant on this problem, but it's a big problem because Taylor is alleged to have fired a firearm at his cousin. And according to at least some reports, right, Taylor told the police that yes, he did fire the firearm. Right? Taylor's just lucky that the cousin survived the attack. Apparently, according to reports, Taylor and this cousin had had problems going back for some time. Well, let me just say, the charges are serious. They carry possible sentences of several years, right? You're talking about two different felony counts. What this means is that, in my opinion, Jermaine Taylor, who already is an older fighter in his 30s, is going to have to step aside as the IBF middleweight champion, right? At a minimum, his belt in this world of boxing is going to be put in play. Right, they can call him champion in recess, you know the way they do it, but sooner or later some people somewhere are gonna fight for the IBF middleweight title. Now here's where it gets interesting, here's where we, the boxing public, have to be careful. If you go to fightnews.com, a great site, and if you look up the rankings of the fighters, you're gonna find out that curiously the IBF does not have a number two ranked contender or a number one ranked contender. You'll also notice that the number three ranked contender is Martin Murray, who's already scheduled to fight WBA champion Janady Golovkin, right? And you'll notice the number four contender is Felix Sturm, who these days has been fighting at 168 pounds. You might recall he was the guy in the ring recently against Robert Stiglitz. So my point to you is there's going to be a promotional boxing establishment power play, right? The next in line for the IBF title isn't readily apparent. That opens the door to a lot of shenanigans. The number five ranked contender by the IBF is David Lemieux. Understand Lemieux's already scheduled to fight Gabe Rosado in a big fight that's going to be very contentious, right? Lemieux could lose that fight. He could win the fight. He could also lose that fight, right? Understand, too, that obvious talents at 160 pounds like Janady Golovkin aren't even ranked by the IBF because, of course, Golovkin holds a different belt, Right? So, keep an eye on this situation. Some other guys, Peter Quillen, are rumored to be in line to fight another WBA middleweight champion, Danny Jacobs. Right? That fight hasn't been announced. There's a lot of speculation. Just look at what develops in terms of who gets the shot at the IBF middleweight title. Understand? Middleweight really is in a bit of flux, right? Peter Quillen abdicated his ground. Sergio Martinez is contemplating retirement, right? So, you know, take a close look at that belt. Just understand that Jermaine Taylor might not be wearing it too much longer, right? Also, pay close attention to what's happening in that Billy Joe Saunders, Chris Eubank fight, right? Because understand, Saunders is actually ranked. And if Saunders puts on a definitive showing and beats Eubank in dramatic fashion, 
whether by lopsided decision or by KO. Right? And by the way, I think Saunders wins that fight. Then he could be closer to the IBF title than you think. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.